Hello and welcome to this video on Parkinson's disease symptoms. Parkinson's is a degenerative movement disorder known to be caused by a loss of dopamine in neurons of the substantia nigra pars compacta. This leads to reduced influence of dopamine in the caudate nucleus and the putamen. The loss of dopamine is important because its job is to phasically modulate two pathways that facilitate movement in the basal ganglia. These pathways are tricky to understand, but we can simplify things by saying that regardless of the inhibitory or excitatory action on D1 or D2 receptors in the striatum, in each of the pathways, the net result is to facilitate movement. So without dopamine, we get characteristic symptoms of Parkinson's disease. Here we have a chap suffering from some of those symptoms. We're gonna start by talking about stooped posture this can be caused by muscle stiffness associated with Parkinson's. It mainly involves a loss of some of the reflexes that maintain upright posture in the axial skeleton. The reflexes are presumably affected due to the basal ganglia's influence over some of the extra pyramidal pathways such as the reticulospinal tract or the vestibular spinal tract. This also causes balance problems. Patients lose balance very easily and therefore can topple backwards. To maintain balance, arms are often carried out in front of the body. When walking, movement is slow and spontaneous movements that accompany walking, such as arm swinging, an unconscious part of the basic motor program, are lost. This is also linked to rigidity, a primary motor symptom, which I will talk about in a moment. The overall slowness and poverty of movement, which is seen in Parkinson's disease, is referred to as bradykinesia or akinesia. Patients struggle to do simple things like button up shirts or clean teeth. There are also accompanying speech problems. Movements are very slow to initiate. Legs are stiff and the patient often walks with the knees bent using a very slow shuffling gait and this is linked to the rigidity and the overall increase in muscle tone. So overall, the patient walks very slowly. Something else that can occur is something called freezing behavior. This is the difficulty in initiating a new motor program like walking, for example, or changing between motor programs. They may take some time to initiate and there may be a lengthy pause. The most conspicuous symptom is the resting tremor. It's the symptom most associated with the disease and occurs in 70% of patients. And it often occurs in the foot or hand on one side. Typically fingers and the hand tremble at rest when held in the lap. Pill rolling is fairly common, an oscillating movement between the index finger and the thumb. And also rigidity, which is a primary motor symptom, can be defined as an increase in muscle tone. This can often be very uncomfortable for the patient or even painful. The rigidity can be described as lead pipe rigidity. And this is the term used to describe the sustained resistance to passive movement. This is different to the clasp and knife rigidity that we see in patients with upper motor neuron syndrome. The tremor and the lead pipe rigidity together are cogwheel rigidity. So we've got two types of rigidity here. We have lead pipe rigidity, which is like the dead weight of the limbs and the complete sustained resistance to passive movement. And together, the lead pipe with the tremor, those two symptoms together, they give us cogwheel rigidity, which is a ratcheting movement when there is passive movement attempted. So cogwheel and lead pipe rigidity. So on top of the symptoms associated with rigidity and the tremor, we have a number of other symptoms that are associated with behaviors of facial expression and speech. So issues concerning facial expression, we often have emotive behaviors that are expressed through the face. We have types of behavior that are expressed through our body language. And in Parkinson's disease, the patient has a mask-like face and often there is a reduction in blinking activity. The overall facial expressions that accompany the slow speech is often slow to respond or non-existent in nature. So, here is the overall 
symptoms associated with Parkinson's disease. See you next time. Subscribe to Salt and Brain Hub for more videos to help explain the mysteries of the brain.